Hey guys, how's it going? Kapran here. So, coming in from the basement again with not the ideal setup and stuff, but we're making do. One of these days, this, this stuff will be on point. Hopefully, that day is pretty soon. Today, I want to talk to you guys about uh, one, of the, one of the points that I made in yesterday's video. So, if you haven't seen that video, maybe you want to check that out. Um, but uh, it's, you know, talked about some overdue changes, and the last one is really what I was leading the video into, which was that Blizzard can gain so much content basically for nothing if they just periodically buff cards that are completely unused, and there's quite a few of them. It got quite a bit of response, and uh, some of it was negative, some of it I felt um, didn't really understand the point. So today, I'm going to illustrate the point, and I'm going to give you guys another top 10, I guess. No, it's not really a top 10. It's just 10 cards that I thought, you know, would, would do a good job of showing you guys the potential of this idea, the potential of buffing crap cards in Hearthstone. So, uh, just to get back on this point, uh, I talked to some of the Blizzard guys. They don't like nerfing stuff because it feels bad when you work towards a card and then it's crap, and even though you get the full value, you may have, you know, lost a lot of value trying to build up towards the deck, or you might just be unhappy. So they don't want that. So they don't want the negative feeling in Hearthstone. But, you know, buffing crap cards that no one uses anyway is basically like introducing cards into the game. Um, it's it's totally a positive feeling. Um, and if it's not, well, you can just avoid the cards that are, you know, somewhat used. So this idea, I feel, is really good because when an expansion comes out, you can just you can just not bother about some of the cards. You can just introduce some shit anyway. Like, there's a lot of shitty cards that get introduced with every expansion. You can just release those anyway. And over time, you'd want to buff them. And uh, there's there's a lot of these cards. As I mentioned, uh, some of the feedback, some people made lists of over 60 cards that basically nobody uses. 60 cards that nobody uses. And most of those are actually neutral, which is totally crazy. It's like It's like half of the card pool is basically like, almost or completely unusable. And this is uh, a pretty interesting thing in Hearthstone. Hearthstone is not like other card games because other card games uh, usually open actual packs and those actual packs have cards and they need to make money. And well, a lot of these actually work off of you just buying a lot of garbage. Uh, Blizzard doesn't really do that. Each pack only has five cards, and I mean, you're probably going to want the good few anyway, so um, the, the, the point that I'm really trying to get at is Hearthstone, unlike every other card game, doesn't need bad cards. Bad cards do not need to exist in Hearthstone, and this is, this is really why this, this uh, concept is so, it's so important. So uh, the idea is that you have a bunch of shitty cards every time you introduce an expansion. Some cards are probably just shitty. Some cards are just turned out to be shitty. They don't turn out the way you want, like Axe Flinger. Axe Flinger kind of sucks ass, for instance. Um, and the idea is that, uh, let's say every week, you would buff two garbage cards, and you'd make it like a regular thing. And it, it probably wouldn't change the whole game, but it would change maybe a deck, or maybe two, or maybe three. And it would kind of spice up the meta on a very regular basis. And because you would keep it regular, and because you have a lot of material, Material to work with, as we just mentioned, a lot of cards do suck ass. Um, it doesn't really affect the tournament scene at all. Like, you know, some people kind of brought up the point that, you know, uh, the, the BlizzCon World Finals, whatever, would kind of be, that's, that's affected anyway, man. Throughout the year, there's like three expansions, there's like a million cards, there's like a million different decks. The players that are good at the game are those that understand uh, the base concepts and put a lot of effort to get to where they are. And this absolutely doesn't change if you have uh, a routine of change in the game. And I think that's really the key. So let's get into it. I want to start with the cards that I mentioned in yesterday's video that, okay, I will admit, I didn't do a very good job of uh, selling you guys on. So I made like Dalar and Mage, used to be a 2 4, and I thought it'd just be a 2 4 again, which would be maybe used. Okay, yeah, the way to change cards to make them useful isn't usually to change their stats, but sometimes it is. So hopefully the examples I have for you guys today will really uh, open your eyes into what's possible here. So Dalar and Mage, we can keep it at 1-4, just give it 2 spell damage, because with 2 spell damage, I mean, it's a, if it's a 2-4 or 1-4, uh, 
people are still probably going to choose to use it or not to use it. If people want like a super spell damage deck, they'll put it in, maybe. But if it's a 2-4, it really doesn't change too much. Uh, maybe, here and there. But if you get a 2 spell damage, it kind of puts it into the niche decks if you want to maybe try out decks with a crap load of spells. Uh, you know, it's pretty good. There aren't any cards in the game with 2 spell damage. There's only one, and then way more than one, Mr. Malagos. So... Yeah, that's that's kind of the idea that you can you can push cards into usefulness without making them really too powerful. Like it's it's not overpowered. Down the major two spell damage is not overpowered. It's just cool, right? And uh, War Golem was the other card that I talked about yesterday. I said to just give it two more health, which honestly is a terrible suggestion because it's not going to see play. It doesn't make the card any cooler. Um, yeah. So the way you make the card at least cooler, it still probably won't see play except maybe in decks that taunts and buff stuff is to make uh, War Golem kind of have the gargoyle effect, make it a 6-6, six, six, because you, you kind of have to adjust for that a little bit. You don't, you just, you don't, you don't want like just slightly, a significantly better card out of a regular card. You don't want to just buff something uh, to a crazy value. So it's just kind of cool. 7 mana 6-6, six, six, kind of crappy, but then with the healing effect, it's obviously worth a lot in the gargoyle, so it has to be worth quite a bit in the War Golem, and it's a bigger creature. So if you give this taunt and your opponent only has like weenie stuff, you know, you might, you might actually seal out the game, which is pretty cool. It's not really overpowered, though. I don't see this card being played in every deck. So, yeah, it's cool. Other cards do get impacted a lot by stats, and mostly has to do with the lower cards, but it's kind of difficult to improve the stat points on, on low drops because often it does make them overpowered. But an example that I can give you guys, that it, it really shows that it doesn't, in some cases, is the Young Dragonhawk. So the Young Dragonhawk sucks ass. One mana, one one Wind Fury. Nobody's ever used this, uh, even in Arena. It's absolutely terrible. Just absolute garbage. Uh, I guess it was used with, like, old school Unleash the Hounds OTK when Unleash the Hounds was, like, a completely different card. But uh, if you just add one health point, it's uh, one mana, one two. I mean, there's a lot of one mana, one twos that have pretty good effects, and Wind Fury is a pretty good effect. So it's in line we have the other cards, you know? It, it doesn't really change that much, but, you know, maybe people start to make, like, beast decks with buffs and maybe just buff decks in general and act as a better Wind Fury activator. So it's cool. Yeah, it might even hit, like, a zoo list because people run a lot of attack buffs there. And uh, some other cards, you just can't change the stats. There's, like, uh, River Croc. So River Croc is a 2 for a 2-3. You can't just add a stat point on any point in this card. So to make this card usable, you have to have it do something. So, you know, one thing you could do is just have it gain some life. Why not? You know, it's whatever. You make the card from completely unusable to probably unusable. But when you do use it, it doesn't totally suck. Like some people use uh, just granular life gain because life gain is fairly valuable. So if you put River Croc in your deck, you can use it as a whatever two drop, or you can use it as mid, maybe even late game life gain in some cases to maybe make some use of the card. And hey, man, it's a beast with life gain. Maybe, maybe Hunter will actually not play complete face decks. Or hybrid, right. That's probably not going to happen, though. Uh, another idea is, because um, new mechanics are constantly coming out, I feel like the mechanics are cool, but often they're not really exposed enough. So I took a look at, like, Silverback Patriarch, which is total garbage. Uh, and, well, if you put the cost one less for each minion that died, it's suddenly kind of a cool card. It's still probably not going to be used anywhere. I took one health off of it because I think a 1-4 might be a little bit too good, and I didn't want it to seem like I was just throwing out overpowered cards. This card probably still sucks, but, like, someone might put it in their deck. Like, if you can, if you can do, like, an equality combo or, like, some big hellfire or shadow flame and then play this guy for zero, it's kind of like a zero mana, you know, void. Void Walker, it's okay. Yeah, kind of. Hmm. It's okay, it's okay, you know? So it's cool to, like, uh, just push the variance of... Uh, the variability, I guess, of cards. Just so many more types, and you make the game just a lot more interesting with this stuff. And if you want, you can just come up with new mechanics. Uh, I took a look at Magma Rager. Magma Rager's a uh, notoriously awful card, um, and it's largely because of the one health, but you don't really want to buff the one health, because otherwise Moonfire doesn't kill it, and they got the art thing, 
and magma ragers always just going to be something that dies really quick. But uh, in World of Warcraft, there was like a lot of magma ragers, um, or you, you'd kill them and they'd just be more and that kind of stuff. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to give magma rager a death rattle to put another magma rager in your hand. So you have endless magma ragers. So it actually becomes somewhat of a decent card in like the uh, the top deck wars, for instance. Um, but you know in in the normal game, it kind of sucks ass because, you know, three mana, five, one is often just not good enough tempo, let alone, you know, anything else. It's just kind of a waste if they can deal with it with like a one drop or just with their hero power. You just lose out that way. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Some people might actually make decks for this card, and that would be just awesome. Um, I didn't want to get into class cards too much because it doesn't affect the game in a big way, but you know there's a lot of potential here as well. Uh, cards like Eye for an Eye just straight up suck because, well, as it turns out, one damage is not really worth one card. Uh, so I thought we could make Eye for an Eye not only be a bit more effective in the damage, as you see there, so it only triggers off of three or more, um, but also it makes Paladin Secrets a bit more tricky. And I feel the secret mechanics in the game um, are mostly really awesome because of the guesswork. So when you make that system more complex, I think it allows for more play. And a card like this might actually allow people to play like aggressive Paladin decks. And uh, yeah, just, just so much cool stuff. And it's such a little effort to make this change. And it's so cool. There's a lot of other cards that, uh, you know, buffing stats or changing ability doesn't really work too well. So you kind of want to work with them a little bit here and there. A good one is Nightblade. So Nightblade in Arena is okay because that three damage battle cry is okay, but that's basically all you use it for. Um, but in Constructed, you know, if you make Nightblade a 5 5 with the same effect, it's still basically not going to be used because it's just not as good as most other 5 drops. Uh, it might be in some decks, so it's a little bit of an option, but I thought what would make the card cooler is given its stealth. So if you make it a, uh, a battle card deal 3 damage and you get the stealth effect, it's, uh, it's kind of about as good as like a Stranglethorn Tiger. Um, you know, the stats are a bit worse, but you can maybe get a bit more burst with that attack in. I think people actually run this card, which would make it awesome, but at the same time, because it has the four health, suddenly it dies to, like, board clear, suddenly it dies to, like, flame cannon, suddenly it dies to, like, bomb blobber. So, you know, you, you, you can maybe, even if the card does end up being, like, really powerful, you can actually, like, maybe change a meta game in an interesting way. Like, if people started playing a lot of bomb blobbers, for instance, that would, that would result in people playing different different decks entirely, which is really awesome if you think about it. Uh, and if you're, if you're wondering, I'm pretty sure the card will work because I'm pretty sure battle cries that don't require creature trigger effects on stats do occur before the creature actually goes into play. So normally when, you, when a creature does damage, it breaks its own stealth, but I think if the damage is done before the card comes into play, when it actually comes to play with stealth, it should maintain its stealth. Yeah, Hearthstone's a weird game sometimes. And, of course, I didn't want to leave you guys off with just some normals. There's a lot of legendary cards that suck ass in Hearthstone, notably Hemet. So, usually when you have a card with a really powerful effect, it's okay for it to have really shitty stats. Hemet has exceptionally shitty stats, but the problem is his battle cry, his effect, is also not very good. So, I think the, the, the way to make these cards rather than techie, because there's already a lot of techie cards, is just to give them, like, decent stats and just overall, because, like, originally when the game came out, like, all legendaries should have had, like, ridiculously high mana cost because the game was slow. Now the game is, is fast. Like, really fast. Like, if you don't do something really good on the first few turns, you're going to lose. So, you know, I think it's only fair to scale down some of, the le some of these legendaries. So why not start with, like, the shittiest one ever, which is Hemet. If you make Hemet, like, a 3 mana 3-4 three, with the same effect, you know, you don't feel so bad for putting the card in your deck. And, you know, maybe it cleans up some Hunter cards, maybe it cleans up some Druid Claws, I don't know, it's like a one of, you know? These days, three mana creatures are extremely powerful, so having one that's about on par, and it's only a one of, it's just cool, you know? Why not? Suddenly, people can use Legendaries without having to put in, like, late game in that form, so that's, that's pretty cool. And also, uh, this is mostly inspired from the list that people came up with, the cards they wanted buffed. I wanted to show you guys what a significant difference you can make by just changing the 
uh, place of a card on the mana curve. So you got Nas Dormu, one of the coolest cards in the game. He literally has his own like huge effect, completely unique. You know, lots of amazing stuff associated with this card, but people can't play it because, well, it sucks. It dies to big game. It's nine mana, so it's just way too much. It often doesn't actually do anything the turn it's played. It's really only good from like Sneed's old Shredder, which is mostly because of the effect, not necessarily because of the eight eight stats. Usually, that's more of a liability. Um, but then at the same time, you, you got you get like some of these new legendaries just have outstanding stats and are still not used. For instance, like Trade Prince Gallowix, you know. There's, there's like almost no rogue decks with Trade Prince, and he's a 6-mana 5-8 with a sick ability. So how about that? Why don't we just make Nazdormu a 6-mana 5-8? Suddenly, it's pretty good, you know? It's a 6-mana dragon, which is uh, somewhat unique, because most of the other ones around that mana curve kind of suck ass. Uh, you get the cool effect, and you don't feel punished, you don't feel bad for putting this guy in your deck if you want to. And in some cases, it might actually be good, because this card is totally a counter to Grim Patron Warrior, because all those stupid-ass patrons take forever to play their animation. That's mainly their main weakness. So you have cool, news of, cool new use of old cards, uh, just awesome cards in general. They're used in a fun way, they're used in an effective way, and they're used in a techie counter way as well. You guys can really see how Hearthstone, the way the game is set up, it makes it so the smallest of changes can really have such an awesome, such a big, such a cool impact. And uh, you know, just keep in mind, like, if they had a system where they buffed you know, two old cards a week, they could do a much better job than I did in this list. I mean, I, I came up with this list in like 20 minutes, and there's 10 cards on it. So if you spend a week with a lot of devs, with people that actually it's their job to balance things, and you know you got to pump one of these out every three days, you know, how hard can that be? I'm sure they'd come up with much better stuff than I did. And yeah, one can dream. Hopefully the dream gets realized someday. But for now, I guess we'll stick to Arena. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.